What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, and we're also going to be talking about two trades that I made today in the stock market. And for those of you guys that didn't check out the video I uploaded earlier today, I uploaded a video on three ways that you can control your emotions when trading stocks. So I highly recommend you guys go check that out. It's the video before this one. And let's get started with today's video. So we saw today, guys, in the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, we opened up red and had a very bloody morning in terms of the overall markets, guys. The Dow Jones was down about 800 points again. The NASDAQ was down about, I believe it was like 70 to 100 points. I forget the exact number. And, you know, the S&P 500 was down about 70 points as well at the worst part of the day. So the Dow Jones guys literally posted back to back, you know, 800 point red days. So in two days, guys, you know, the Dow Jones was down about 1600 points at the low of today. But, you know, thankfully, you know, we saw a very strong comeback. We swung back from that 800 point loss all the way up to where we are right now. We closed the market at down about 80 points down about 0.3 percent which is a ridiculous comeback and if we can see here on these technicals guys on the 180 day four hour chart we noticed that it pretty much bounced perfectly at that support at around 2400 or 24 thousand five hundred dollars we noticed this is a support because we held here at about twenty four five hundred here at about twenty four five hundred and now we officially bounced here at twenty four five hundred today on thursday december sixth in uh, two thousand and eighteen so what this chart is telling me right now guys is that you know the dow jones is making lower highs meaning that this high here is 27,000. This high here is about 26,200. And this one right here is at about 25,800. And when a stock, an ETF, an index is making lower highs, that means it could potentially be downtrending. But with the one thing that's uh, you know holding this one from being in a full downtrend is that it's holding the support that we talked about about one minute ago at about twenty four thousand five hundred. So you know if this one's able to maybe pop up back here and you know get rejected at the top of this channel, make another higher or lower high, which would be right around like twenty five thousand five hundred in my personal opinion. If we do get rejected at the top of this, uh, you know, downwards lower high pattern here. You know, if we do get rejected there, we'll be able to potentially push back down and retest this, you know, support at about 24,500. And if we break below that, that is going to be the confirming factor of the downtrend in the Dow Jones from this 180 day, four hour chart. And, you know, we're going to be getting deeper, deeper into correction territory closer to the bear market. And remember, guys, when an, when, uh, you know, when an index is down, you know, 10, 15 percent percent that is still technically a correction and by this i mean if we're down 10 15 percent from the top right that's still considered a you know correction and we can see how much we're down right now you know based off of the levels we're currently at 24,900 from where we were at the top at about you know the end of uh, september we're only down about eight percent in terms of the dow jones so we're still in correction territory guys the closer we get and once we surpass if we surpass 19 plus percent, uh, you know, down from the peak, that is when we're getting into a bear market. So from now, guys, we're still in a correction in terms of the overall stock market and especially in the Dow Jones. So keeping an eye if we're able to hold above this support tomorrow. And if we are, guys, you know, this could be a nice bounce back up to that top of that channel that I was talking about. And we'll be able to play some of the market ETFs that go up in price when, you know, the overall markets are going Going up in price. So in terms of the Dow, down about 80 points, down 0.3 on the day. S&P 500, very similar pattern, guys. We're in the horizontal pattern that we've been talking about. Resistance at about 2820, support at around 2630. And we bounced on there today. 
very nicely, ending the day down only $4.00. 0.15%. Crazy because on this one day, take a look, guys. We opened up really strong red, right? We got all the way to 2620, and then we had a 70 point swing all the way back up, closing the market. So, you know, strong reversal pattern, guys. That was literally a 3% push in the SP. Very strong reversal pattern heading into tomorrow. And this is really going to play out, uh, you know, based off of my theory that I was talking about in yesterday's video. In yesterday's video, I was saying we're going to have either two, you know, either two scenarios that are going to play out today. We're either going to break below the support, you know, have a very strong red day and break below the support in terms of the S&P, which we really did have a strong red day, or we're going to come back and, you know, push up and, uh, you know, pretty much recover from this support. So it kind of played out both ways because, you know, again, we were down about another Another 3% today, but we swung all the way back up, closing the day literally at, you know, pretty much no loss whatsoever. So that is looking pretty good, guys. And again, you know, I do expect us to push up here potentially in the S&P the next couple of days if we do end up holding above this support tomorrow. And, you know, the next resistance, I would say, is about at like 2740 in terms of the S&P, and then the next one obviously would be at about 2800 and then again at about 2820 So, you know, keep an eye on these indexes. Are we going to remain green tomorrow? That's a big if, and you know, with the volatility the market has been in, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a huge green day tomorrow, and I wouldn't be surprised if we got crushed again tomorrow and, you know, pretty much broke below the support on the Dow and, you know, on this S&P index. And, you know, we kind of got to play it by ear, see what the futures are telling us, and, you know, that's what I'm personally doing. Actually, yeah, and let's take a look at really quickly to see how much, you know, how much is the S&P down from the peak. So from where we are now... We're only down about 9%, 8-9%, you know, the same amount as the Dow. And remember, guys, that's just correction territory. Anything 10, 15, 16, 17% down from a peak, that's still technically a correction. Anything above 19, 20%, you know, that is heading into a bear market. So, you know, as of now, guys, that's what the technicals are telling us in terms of this index. And, uh, you know, the NASDAQ. This one, from the peak, let's see how far it's fallen. So from where it is right now, let's say six, let's get it exact so we can get a really exact measure. So 68.26 up to about 77. You know, this one's down the most, down about 11, 12%. So out of the three, you know, this one's fallen the most. And this is mostly due, in my personal opinion, to Apple being crushed from 230 all the way down to the low 170s, where it's at right now. And obviously, Apple has a huge huge weight on the NASDAQ and the entire stock market. And uh, that's just my personal opinion right there. So in terms of these technicals, guys, we are holding above this support nicely on the NASDAQ at about, you know, 6,700 flat. So we bounced on there. Now we're going to be testing this uh, 180 simple moving average tomorrow. And, you know, what we notice here in terms of these charts, guys, and remember this, um, you know, whenever the 50 simple moving average crosses above the 180 day simple moving average, that's a bullish sign. And the fact that we broke out of this 180 simple moving average resistance, we pulled back, held above that support, and now we're about to see potentially a cross here you know, the 50 above the 180, this could be a strong reversal pattern for the NASDAQ. So out of the three indexes, guys, right now, the NASDAQ is looking the best off of a technical perspective. And we're up $23 on this one at the close, up about 0.3%. So now that we got a little overview of what's going on in the markets today, guys, again, very strong swing in the red, and we swung all the way back heading to the close, which was absolutely crazy. And I was actually able to trade TVIX today two times, and I made about 5-6% on those two different trades as the market was being, you know, dumped early on in the morning today. And let's, let's just take a look at TVIX, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here. And uh, let's just take a look at it. So, 
one day, one minute. Let's just take a look at, yeah, let's take a look at the one day, one minute because this is what I was looking at when trading TVIX. So we noticed, okay, the markets were selling off heading into the pre-market hours, meaning that TVIX was rising pre-market hours. And once we saw that big sell-off from about 53 all the way down to $50, right, this opened my eyes because of the margin of profit that was there for TVIX. Just take a look at this, guys. And you know, whenever we see a rise pre-market hours, then a sell-off, that opens that opens up a margin of profit. So we rised up $53, sold off to 50, and that opened up a nice 5% chunk. And I wasn't able to catch this bounce perfectly i actually got in at about 51 dollars and 75 cents and i ended up selling once we broke above this resistance or re really got close to this resistance for about a two percent profit so that was my first trade from about 51.75 up two percent on that trade sold out it went up to about 53.75 left some profit on the board but i'm not worried about that because i'm all about staying green taking some profits and you know looking for a possible re-entry on all positions that i trade and then that's exactly what i ended up doing we pulled back here bounced again on that 180 simple moving average i did not time this bounce perfectly but we broke above the ema broke above the 50 sma and i ended up getting in on this pullback here we popped up and i believe i got in at about 52 dollars and 30 cents and i ended up selling out at about I think this one was like $54.30 I ended up selling out. And again, I left a pretty decent amount of profit on the board during this huge bull run that we had from, you know, about 10 o'clock all the way up to about 11.30 Eastern Standard Time. But let's just see how much percent I made on that one. So from 52.30, I got in there and I popped up all the way to 54.30 and that gave me about a 3.75% profit. So, 2% on my first trade, guys, 3.75 on my second, giving me about 5 to 6%, which my daily goal is from 3 to 5%. So the fact that I got over that today makes me very happy. And, you know, as long as I'm hitting in that ballpark of 3 to 5% every single day, that is when I pretty much cut trading off for the day because I do not like to over trade. I like to hit my profits and, you know, be done with the day that's pretty much what i did and you know i was done trading today midday it was around lunchtime at about like 11 12 o'clock eastern standard time pretty much two three hours of trading for me today so you know now that we talked about two trades that I made today, same ones in TVIX, I want to talk about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching for tomorrow. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I trade the same couple of stocks and ETFs. And you know, I know it can get repetitive, but I focus on ones that I truly understand that I've made money with in the past and that I consistently make money with because who wouldn't do that, right? Why would you go out there, right? And try to find new stocks every single day if what you're already trading is making money you know that to me doesn't really make sense but you know it all depends on your style if you like to go find penny stocks or you know low cap stocks with low float that could potentially fly up 40 50 60 percent in a day that's all you but for me you know i'm more conservative i don't mind making two percent on a day you know making my two percent three percent and being done with the day because in my personal opinion guys that is how you can become more successful and more uh, actually not more successful but you know more consistent because you know a lot of people are successful trading stocks but what you got to understand understand is that you know or trading penny stocks rather but what you got to understand with these penny stocks is that one could go up 40 percent one day and you can hop into one and then lose 40 percent the next day right so you know they're very volatile they're very risky in my personal opinion and i've just been able to be more consistent you know with these similar stocks and etfs that i trade all the time so let's just talk about what I'm personally watching tomorrow. So based off of what the technicals gave us in the overall markets, you know, 
we could expect a green day tomorrow. You know, we talked about the NASDAQ crossing above the 50, crossing above the 180. Very bullish sign there. You know, the S&P held above the support at about 2630. You know, we talked about the Dow Jones holding above the same support as well. So if we do see a move up tomorrow in these different indexes, which again, I do think is possible. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be watching the futures pre-market hours to pretty much make my decision. I think, you know, TQQQ as well as QQQ are going to be fantastic plays. And if we take a look at TQQQ, you know, this one had a very strong comeback today. It broke above the 50 SMA on the 180 day chart. Just take a look at this swing guys from 44 all the way to 48, 10% move nearly in the matter of from the low of the day to the close price in TQQQ. And again, you know, if the markets go up tomorrow, I do believe this one could run from about $48 up to $51, maybe $52, which would put it right under the 180 simple moving average here on the 180 day four hour chart. You know, we could also take a look at QQQ which is a little bit more risky in my opinion because we are at this uh you know 180 simple moving average but then again you know we are making a uh, higher low here in terms of this so this could be a reversal pattern here you know this could be the you know this is the low at 158 this could be the second low at about 162 and from here we could potentially run up to maybe 165 maybe 166 and you know if that does happen guys that would be an awesome trade tomorrow as well. So market ETFs, QQQ, as well as TQQQ, right? I'm going to be watching those. And Hershey is another one today that pretty much played out pretty well from, uh, you know, the whole entire uh, market sell-off, right? So, you know, we saw Hershey pull back and bounce at that 107 price range, roughly, that I actually wanted to see it bounce at. Actually, no, it was 105. My bad, guys. You know, we actually bounced right on that 180 simple moving average on this 180-day four-hour chart, which is another support that I was actually looking at, in my personal opinion, before potentially putting money into Hershey, ticker symbol HSY. So the fact that we're right above, under this uh, 50 simple moving average now, I would love to see it break above there, hit my alert, and that's where I'll probably end up maybe taking a little swing in Hershey for a, probably a profit margin of about 1 to 1 1.5% over the span of two, three days, you know, if everything goes as planned so hershey guys qqq tqqq uh you know what other what other ones we're watching you guys were watching really closely in the group um <coughs> excuse me um you know, you guys today sold off early on. It was at 130, and we pretty much had a strong consolidation day today in you guys. And if we take a look at this 20 day chart, what we can conclude from this is pretty much that, you know, 130 to 140 is a super strong support for you guys. So, you know, it all depends on what natural gas ends up doing. Are we going to start pushing up, maybe potentially test 450 in natural gas, 465? Because, you know, these are all previous support levels that have now become resistance points that we have to get back above, you know, before getting to that potential $5 mark in natural gas but the fact that it's holding this in terms of you gas you know we could potentially run a previous resistances at about 160 from where we are at 140 right now which do give it about 10 13 percent so you know pre-market hours tomorrow guys let me just share with you a scenario that could potentially happen so if natural gas slowly starts to creep up back into the 440s what we're going to see tomorrow is, you know, see you guys start pushing up like this, right? We're going to see it potentially be getting into the 140s. Well, we will see it in the 140s if natural gas gets into the 440s, but we'll see it in probably the mid 140s in pre-market hours. And that's going to be a very good sign that it's slowly uptrending and it's slowly, you know, reversing from the support point. So in my opinion, guys, if we do see that, you know, 145 could be a good entry point for a short swing up to 160, which has been the previous resistance so 
I'm watching that one super closely, guys. Another one that I want to talk about is Cron, ticker symbol C-R-O-N. So what we were talking about with this weed stock was we wanted to see it pull back and hold above that 10 uh, new support level, which was once a resistance. And remember, guys, whenever a resistance is broken above would it by trend lines, by you know a stock ETF index, that becomes the new support level. So the fact that we broke above it here, and I'll give you a larger scale picture, right? The fact that we broke above this uh, resistance at $10, right around here, $980, $10, we pulled back and now we're holding above it. That means that this stock is trying to make that as a new support level. So if it does hold here, guys, you know, it did bounce, right? We do notice it pulled back, you know, pre-market hours today and we bounced literally right at 980. Perfect, right? Picture perfect. We bounced and we had a solid push up today. You know, if this is able to hold tomorrow, potentially pull back a little bit, maybe bounce again, test it, and then, you know, start to reverse back up. I think Cron is at a very interesting level. So I'm watching Cron very closely, guys. I'm watching watching you guys. I'm watching TVIX. If we do potentially see a downturn tomorrow in the market, I'm watching TQQQ as well as QQQ. If we do maintain the support levels in the market and then slowly have a green day tomorrow and potentially into next week, there's just a bunch of different scenarios. And what I really focus on is what's happening pre-market hours. What are the futures like before really, you know, planning my trade for that day? You know, the day before, I typically have a batch of stocks that I'm watching and then I pretty much make up scenarios in my head for each and every one of those stocks to see what I'm going to be playing, whether or not, you know, based on whether or not the market's going up, markets are going down. And then when pre-market hours hits, I see the futures. That's really going to solidify my decision for that day. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter and join our Discord group as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great night. Peace out.